Drysdale and Miss Jane said they was going to surprise us, and they sure enough did. What you looking for, Granny? Looking for the hole in the roof. What hole in the roof? The hole in the roof that snow comes from. Well, looky under. It's all over the tree and all over the floor. <laughs> Kelly, you sweep it up before it gets to melting and gets everything soggy. <laughs> Get through. You climb up on the roof and patch the hole that it comes through. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is snow at all. It ain't cold and it don't melt. Well, I bet you this is what they call artificial snow. I don't care what you call it. Get up on the roof and patch the hole it comes through. <laughs> I reckon Jethro means this Beverly Hills snow ain't the kind that falls down from the sky. Yeah, that's right. You just throw this around by hand. Pitiful place, kid. <laughs> don't even know how to snow proper out here. Granny. <laughs> Christmas ain't no day to go lambast in Beverly Hills again. Hey, everybody, let's open a present. Yeah. Hey, come on, Granny. Oh, put me down, you big one. Oh, <laughs> hey, Ellie Mae, this one's to you from Miss Jane. Listen to this. To Ellie Mae, so sweet and fair. Use this gift to have dry hair. Sounds like it's gonna rain. Hey, Jethro, this one here is for you. Ellie, too. Hey, it's from Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale. What do you think's in it? One way to find out. Open it up. <laughs> Look at Paul, it's a hat. My, ain't that pretty? Feels like a rain hat. Yeah, this will sure enough keep my hair dry when I'm walking in the rain. What's this hose for in the back? Well, I reckon that's let the water drain off. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jeff. Look what I got, a brand new suit of clothes. <laughs> Uh, looks like it's made out of rubber. Fella sure could keep dry in this rascal. I reckon it's for walking in the rain, like Ellie's hat. <laughs> I reckon these go on my feet. Be kind of awkward walking in these. <laughs> i tell you what, Jethro. Why don't you put the whole thing on, we'll see how it looks. Hey, yes, sir, Uncle Jeff. <laughs> what you got there, Granny? Near as I can figure, it's one of them electric washer machines like we got out back. <laughs> Only this one's got a clothes drying rack on it. A lot fancier than that other machine. That blame fancy, I can't figure out how to get the clothes in it. Let's see now. You got a knob here marked on. Let's turn that and see what happens. A lot quieter than the other one. <laughs> I don't think it's working, Granny. Don't hardly see how it could. No way to put water in it. Maybe it's lighting up. Look here, Andrew. It's done got water in it. Water in it? Look at that. There's fish in there. Ellie Mae? I didn't see it. What'd you see? I ain't telling, but one thing's certain. I ain't gonna wash none of our clothes in there until that water's been changed. <laughs> well, give us a pretty washing machine, Paul. The Drysdale's. Oh, Ellie, did you get Miss Drysdale's present? Sure did, I'll fetch it. What's that girl got on her head? Oh, that's her new rain hat. Miss Jane gave it to her. I thought it wasn't supposed to rain out here much. Here it is. What kind of a varmint is that? It's what Miss Drysdale wants most of all for Christmas. A mink. <laughs> well, me, uh, Miss Drydale especially wanted a full-length mink. Does this one fill the bill? Yes, sir. It's as long as they come. <laughs> I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You didn't by any chance steal this critter, did you? No, sir. Well, I know you hadn't, but uh, Miss Drydale made such a point of it. She said she didn't want no mink stole. <laughs> What I wanted most of all. A full length mink. Oh, I'm glad you like it, dear. Well, now I've got to dash over to the Clampets before they go outside and discover their boat. Their what? We gave them a boat for Christmas, among other things. And I had the boat company deliver it and put it right in front of their door. Oh, Ravenswood, the skipper dressed? Very nearly, sir. A boat and a skipper? 
Isn't that overdoing it? All part of a very clever strategy, Margaret. Now, if I can get Jed hooked on sailing, Jethro and Ellie Mae on skin diving, and Granny on deep sea fishing, they'll never want to go back to the hills. Those are things you can't do without an ocean. But, Milburn, I don't want them to stay here. But, Margaret, I do. <laughs> now, you don't get coats like that with bottle caps. <laughs> and just for insurance, I gave them a television set. That's something else they can't get back in the hills. The skipper is ready, sir. Here he is, huh? <laughs> Why, it's an ape! Oh, no, it's a chimp. And Ellie may will be crazy about it. Oh, I hope so, sir. I would not like to add to my regular duties the daily grooming and dressing of a anthropoid. <laughs> well, let's take him next door. We'll put him on the boat, ring the doorbell, and run. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, madam. <laughs> After you, sir. <laughs> like an overgrown tadpole. Lucky, I got one like Jethro, too. Whew. Sure is hot, this thing. I reckon they was meant to be wore mostly in the rain. How come the Drysdales are giving us so much rain stuff when it ain't supposed to rain out here? Maybe they know something we don't, Granny. Well, I'm gonna get out of this thing. There goes that rascal playing that music again. <laughs> I think he'd learn something new for Christmas. Yeah, I heard somebody drive off. Maybe it's that fellow that plays the music. Well, we can't begrudge him taking Christmas Day off. <laughs> Granny, you recollect hearing it rain last night? No. How about you, Ellie? No, sir, I didn't hear. Well, we must have slept through a regular cloudburst. What you mean? What I mean is that sometime during the night, somebody sailed a boat up our driveway. <laughs> <laughs> No high water mark on the house. Well, if there was no water, he must have got caught in a heap of wind. Let me fetch Jethro out here. I'm gonna need help moving this thing. Yes, sir, Pa. Now, whoever done this was a mighty poor sailor. Well, really, maybe he was just celebrating a mite too much last evening. Let's face it, he was drunk as a skunk. See if he's still in there. <laughs> Granny, we don't want to mean mouth that sailor too much. If I looked like that, I might take the drink myself. Great clouds of blue gnats. That's the hairiest, ugliest sailor I ever did see. Granny, we don't want to hurt his feelings. He might have got lost at sea and hadn't had a chance to shave. Come on out, you're saved. We help you. Yeah, don't be afraid. You're on dry land now. You're among friends. Uh, he ain't coming out. Maybe he don't understand our kind of talk. Maybe he ain't American. I hope he ain't. He's no bigger than this and bow-legged to boot. <laughs> Hot diggity dog, is this ship iron? No, I think it's wood. <laughs> There's a little sailor boy in there. He looks like a monkey. Shh, Jethro, don't say things like that. He don't want to come out as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Why, well, that there's what you call a chimpanzee. Thank goodness he ain't an American boy. <laughs> I'll go fetch him out. Well, I reckon if anybody can make a sailor leave his boat, it's Ellie Mae. <laughs> Jethro, you'd best go along with her. From the looks of him, he's been to sea a for a long time. <laughs> yes, sir, Uncle Jethro. Oh, come on, Margaret, hurry up. I'm coming, Milburn. Who are we going to drop in on? The Art Linkletters? 
The George Burnses, the Jack Dennys. The Jed Clampets. I refuse to go slumming on Christmas. Well, suit yourself. Oh, I understand they have a sensational gift for you. Oh? What is it? Well, who knows? With their millions, it could be the Hope Diamond. <laughs> it is the season of goodwill. <laughs> Come along, dear. Howdy there, Mr. and Mrs. Grand Dale. Merry Christmas to you. Well, the same to you. And many, many more. I'm sorry about this boat kind of blocking the driveway here. It was sailed up there last night by a little critter called a uh, chimpanzee. Oh, no, no. The chimpanzee didn't do it. He's a present for Ellie Mae. From Milford and me, we know how fond the dear girl is of critters. Well, thank you very much. I had the boat put there, Mr. Clappett. It's a gift for you. From Milford and me, we know how fond you are of outdoorsy things. Yes. <laughs> oh, by the way, you'll find a trailer for the boat in your garage. Trailer? From Milburn and me, we know how fond Margaret, you are. <laughs> it has wheels. You can put the boat on it and haul it any place you'd like to go. Well, we sure are obliged for all the nice things you give us. We got a mighty nice present for you, too, Miss Drysdale. How big? I mean, how nice. <laughs> well, speaking of size, Ellie Mae says it's the biggest day. Is. Oh, you shouldn't have done it. We shouldn't? Well, we could always take it back. Oh, no, no, no. That was just an expression like that. Uh, uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Margaret, why don't you go on in? There are some features of the boat I'd like to point out to Mr. Clampett. Yes, dear. See you later. <laughs> diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> working beautifully, isn't it? I guess so. Where all the water coming from? <laughs> from Lake Erie. Where's it going? Lake Ontario. Well, I hope it don't flood our house on the way. <laughs> oh, Daddy, you're so droll. Uh, Mr. Clampett tells me you have a gift for me. You betcha we have. Lily may has got it out back playing with it. Oh, my goodness. I, I hope she doesn't lose it. Oh, no, no. She's got it on a chain. Oh, well, let's hurry anyway, huh? All right. You beat me eating bananas. But you gotta admit, I whooped you eating grits. <laughs> and I bet you I can beat you drinking milk, too. <laughs> First, I got a rest of mine. Hello. You and Skipper run out back and fetch Ellie Mae. Tell her Miss Drysdale's here for her present. Yes, Miss Granny. Well, howdy, Miss Drysdale. Hello, Jethro, dear boy. Hello, little sailor. He don't talk American. <laughs> name. He's a chimpanzee. Yeah. Come on, Skipper. Miss Drysdale, while we're waiting for Ellie May, and I'll give you your other present. Oh, another present? Yes, ma'am. This here is my special Christmas gift pack, chock full of good things to eat. Oh, it's simply beautiful. What are these divine-looking morsels? Well, up here we have deviled hawk eggs, pickled crow gizzards. <laughs> Possum sausages, <laughs> candied catfish, <laughs> and over here we have some larrapin' good little teensy owl burgers. Please, no more. Got your mouth to watering, huh? <laughs> well, hip yourself. It's Christmas. <laughs> Miss Trostale, I'm awful sorry, but I lost your present. Oh, no. Yes, ma'am. I was playing with it by the cement pond, and the chain broke, and it got away, and I just can't find it. <laughs> this is terrible. This is tragic. Oh. Awful sorry, Granny. Oh, don't worry, Ellie. I'll make it up to her. I'll give her two of my special Christmas gift packs. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yes, Mr. Clavin, I predict that you're going to get many, many hours of enjoyment from that little craft. Boating has become a tremendously popular sport here in... <laughs> How do you like that? That hunk of fur lying on the floor is worth $10,000. You don't say. I only paid two bits for him when he was a pup. <laughs> you hear that? You were $10,000, you old rascal. No, no, I was referring to this hunk of fur, my wife's brand new coat. Oh! I gave it to her this morning, and already she leaves it lying around on the floor. That fur cost you $10,000? Yes, it did. That's a heap of money to pay to keep warm in a place as warm to start off with. Yes, you're right. But this is a Beverly Hills status symbol. Oh. By golly, I'm going to teach her a lesson. That woman thinks my money grows on trees. Where are you going, Mr. Drydale? I'm going to take this home and hide it. I'll see you later. Duke, I never will understand these city husbands. Back home, and a woman done something to rile her man, he'd just take her over his knee and whomp her a few. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale's fixing to play hide and seek. <laughs> we want to get a better look at Skipper's boat. Well, that's our boat, Jethro. It's a present for Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale. Oh, by the way, Ellie Mae, did you give Miss Drysdale her present? I'm awful sorry, Pop. I was playing with the little critter and it got away. Miss Drysdale is fit to be tied. Yeah, you ought to see her, Uncle Jed. When well, she's crawling around on her hands and knees, a rooting through the bushes like a hungry hog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Skip. It ain't funny, Jethro. <laughs> she done give the little critter a name and everything. You don't say. Yes, sir, she calls it Jim. She's a crawling around and moaning and a saying, where is it? Where's my beautiful Jim? <laughs> you think Ellie May is fond of critters? Why, that woman is like to go out of her mind over that pesky little varmint. What'd you say you called it again, Ellie? A mink. I offered to give her my squirrel, my polecat, my possum, or anything. She wouldn't even listen. She just went right ahead of moaning and a root. <laughs> I even offered her two of my special gift packs. Even that didn't quieten her down. Yeah, when that little mink gets hungry, he'll show up. Come on, let's go look at our boat. <laughs> oh, where's my mink? Where's my beautiful mink? It's gone. Oh, dear. A Melbourne! 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 Oh! Your husband's gone home, Miss Rydell. My mink is gone. My beautiful full-length mink. Has anyone seen it? Oh, no, but come supper time, it's liable to show up. Oh, oh a disastrous day. Oh, now calm down. Wouldn't you just as leave have a rabbit or a squirrel or a raccoon? No, I want my mink! Melbourne! 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 You're right, Granny. Even and Ellie wouldn't be that grieved over a lost critter. Especially one she never laid eyes on. The poor woman is so busted up, she even forgot my special gift packs. Well, we can take them over later. Yeah. And the special one I made for Mr. Drysdale. It's four feet high. And right in the middle, it has a smoked pig with a hedge apple in his mouth. Well, that ought to cheer him up. <laughs> oh, good. Here comes Jethro and Ellie on the truck. Now we can go out and find some water to float our boat in. Who's that sitting up there beside Ellie? <laughs> well, that's Skipper. Looks like they got a coat and a hat on her. I'd give Skipper Ain't Pearl's old hat and coat, because he's from the warm country now. <laughs> okay, here's your wraps. That's fine, Ellie. Well, Jeff Rowe, where you reckon we ought to look first? Well, I hear till there's a Los Angeles River. How about that? Well, sounds like that ought to float a good-sized boat. Let's get rolling. Hey, Uncle Jim, yonder is a boat. That boat was rolling on wheels. Mr. Drives, they'll give us wheels for our boat, too. Johnny goes another one. Let's get off the freeway, Jethro. Try some other streets. Now, everybody keep your eyes peeled for water and boats. Yonder's one. There's a whole lot full. On wheels, too. <laughs> Watch out, Jethro, you run into that. <laughs> Uncle Jed! My doggies, they's all on wheels. <laughs> Man, that was a dandy ride. 
I know now why Mr. Drysdale gives them wheels for our boat. There's not enough water in this place to boil an egg, let alone float a boat. Oh, are we gonna put our boat on wheels and haul it around the street? Well, that wouldn't be much fun. You can't dive off it, you can't fish off it, you can't... Well, I don't know, Jethro. It must be some fun or all them people wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> Come here, quick. What's the matter, Granny? No wonder we couldn't find any water. Looky here. Even the washing machine is dried up. <laughs> Well, it's been a dry Christmas, but a right merry one. This has been a Filmways presentation.